Yo, welcome to our first podcast. Uh, Chris is probably not too happy that we're making this, and neither is Nathan, but um, we're going to make it. Uh, we put on our Instagram uh, a couple, or if we asked you guys if uh, you guys wanted to see a couple things for our podcast, and we got a couple topics for us. And um, let me read off a couple of them, and I'll tell you which ones we're going to. We're, Let's uh, just do them all. We'll just do them all. Let's do them okay. all. All right, so we have the first topic that we're going to go over. I think we all wanted to do this is bags versus coils, real versus fake wheels, and dip versus wrap. We'll, we'll definitely go over that one. Um, we're going to do how many on average know a thing about their own car. <laughs> um, I'm bags. I'll tell you, I know everything about pulleys and the accessory <laughs> belt in this car right here. We'll definitely, we definitely have to put up an image of what happened to your car yesterday. <laughs> I got a box of wheels right there. <laughs> um, we got uh, bags and why they're the best option for show cars. Um, you guys should talk about your favorite meat spots and memories from there. We're definitely going to do that one. Um, we're going to do... <laughs> so JMR350Z said uh, LS, LS swap versus 2J swap the world. Um, and then we got... Uh, this is my favorite one personally. We'll definitely have to go over this. And we're... Um, it's where do you see Mint in motion in five years? That's definitely a good one. We're definitely going to uh, touch on that topic. And then we have best first car. We'll definitely top, uh, We'll definitely stop on that one. And then will you all come down to the Metro Detroit area? Uh, we'll definitely stop on that one too. And yes, we will. We will, we will in the future. But we have a couple more. Um, people are still sending them in because we just did it like two hours ago. So... Um, uh, where do you, which one do you want to start off with? Let's just start at the top of the list, the big one. Top right? of the list? All right. Hold on. I'm going to pull back up again. <sighs> Bags or coils, real versus weight, fake wheels, or dip versus wrap? You want to start with dip versus wrap and then move into the tech? Yeah, we'll do there. dip versus wrap. For sure. For sure. 100% go wrap. Dip. <laughs> no, you don't. Do you actually choose dip? Just take a picture. Of me. I just screenshotted my. This is what I hate about the iPhone X, man. It's so weird, so weird to screenshot. Right. But anyways, so definitely wrap. Um, I feel like wrap is like the like the easiest way to go because you just send it off to a shop and then they just wrap the car. It's definitely more expensive. Um, dip is just like. No, dip can be good. You gotta be patient with it. Yeah, and if you're doing it yourself, especially even with wrap too, if you're doing it yourself, then like yeah, take your time. Take but your like time. dips more budget friendly. I'm not gonna dip my car, but if you're on a budget, do dip and do it properly. Get yeah. the shit. Like do do your research definitely before you dip your car. Because, watch dip your car. Yeah, watch dip your car. Like get the actual like right dip for the car and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. and layers. You can't layers. be a guy peeling and having chipped dip. Yeah. Make sure you shake the can. <laughs> shake the can and put on layers. I don't know. I don't know. The first thing about dip, I dip my Subaru, the first Subaru, the cold Subaru. Dude, I dip the caliber when I had that. Dip hasn't peeled yet because I did it properly. That's Clean true. it and layers. You like, did dip here. Did you dip or spray paint your brakes? No, I used, I used a ceramic coat brake. I dip this. I dip down here. Let's dip. Because... My sister's boyfriend Isaac is the king of dip. King of dip. That kid will if he if you give him a bottle of dip, he'll he'll dip anything. He'll dip anything, but he'll dip this a dip as he'll a peel dip a good dip a good because you put on a lot of coats and make sure your work surface is clean. True. All right, I guess we're gonna have to go for real versus fake wheels. Hashtag Ken 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 Kelsey. <laughs> and Casey. And Casey, and he's got ESR. So let's let's go let's go off of like the first. Like when people think of like fake wheels, they think of SSR, right? No, no, no they think of uh, XXR, XXR, XXR. Uh, ESR. Um, what are the other fake ones? Those are the two big ones. Those are the two big ones. Then there's like water cooled. <laughs> no water cooled. No water cooled. Is okay, well, well, I I want to dabble into water cooled a little bit because I love yeah. their wheel. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, okay, let's go over water cooler a little bit because I this is a big controversy for, through the whole car scene is water cool wheels. Personally, me and Booski, we love their designs. I would They're rock them any day. Exactly. Hate what happened to the brand name and wrap, but 
That just means you remove the center cap and call it good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess if you remove the center cap, then you're chilling. But um, when it comes to water, cool my opinion when it comes to water cool wheels, I don't support their company um, because of certain things that have been said on the internet. Everyone knows. Everyone knows it. it it's just. It's just not a cool, it's not a good thing to have for your brand name. And no. I don't want to support something like that. That's why I personally will never run their wheels. I do like their designs. They're very original. They're a super high quality wheel. But at the same time, I'm not going to support a company that stands for that kind of stuff. So that's my version, or that's my thing on water cool. Okay, back to real versus fake wheels. Let's go with ESR because ESR is coming up in the game like oh yeah they just came out with their three-piece line and yeah. it's sick yeah i mean i haven't seen their three-piece designs yet but i know from like when it comes to like okay so you have you have the esr wheels that are like on your budget they're like they're like budget wheels they're like um first set of wheels i would go with them yeah first set of wheels like yeah yeah I, I, I would too. I would go because you can test your offset. You can test your wheel size. You can test if you need spaces or not. And they're a cheap wheel and you can resell. I'm pretty sure you can resell them for pretty much the same price, if not a little bit lower. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're, they're a really good quality wheel. I mean, the whole the whole thing with real versus fake wheels, I mean, and a company like Ambit, like how TJ Hunt used to run Ambits um, on all still of those. He still does in his drift car? I think he got new no, wheels. No, he got new wheels. He got yeah. new But, like, TJ said in one of his videos like a long time ago, and I agree with this, is real versus fake wheels. Like, real wheel, it's just like the whole Rocket Bunny kit, like the fake Rocket Bunny. Oh, we should definitely go over that. Like, fake Rocket Bunny versus real Rocket Bunny. Yeah, and like supporting fake the creator. Real. Yeah, like, supporting the creator is a huge, huge, huge deal. Like, Rocket Bunny, they're 100% original. They're handmade, everything. I mean, I I support it personally 100%. I am personally have bought a Rocket Bunny kit, and I'll yeah. go into the whole shebang about that. Maybe also later. with wheels, the first person that like came out with them, put the time and effort to designing them, making like them like actually work and function properly, and then just to have a company rip them off and use their design is it's yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like it's super like I I think it's super disrespectful for a company to just like. Take someone else's design, put their name on it, and sell them for a cheaper price. That's just like a slap in the face of the creator. I don't like that. I mean, that's where I don't like companies like ESR and like XXR is like you're just taking other people's designs and just slapping their name on it and be like, hey, this is our wheel. Oh, sick! But when ESR does make the wheel, they make it pretty much the same way or better than some bigger brands. Yeah, exactly. And I guess, I guess when it comes to like a first... Like yes, there's people out there who'll be like, "Yo, dude, you're running, you're running rep wheels. You're you're cause a piece of shit because you're running rep wheels." Like Cam Kelton. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Cam Kelting is running ESRs. They're fake work wheels. Blah blah blah. They still look good. They look good. <laughs> I like how they look. It's just I don't know. There's just like when it comes to like the visual aspect. Like if you can tell a difference, the only visual aspect you can see is if their name is on it or not. Yeah. I mean, if you put. Literally, if you put a rep wheel against, right next to it is the same wheel but real, and you took the center caps off, I don't think you'd be able to tell a difference. There's minor things, but they look pretty There's similar. very, very, very minor things, but I mean, if you want to be, I mean, and personally, if I see you running rep wheels, I'm not going to call you a fake ass person. Like, I'm going to be like, yo, those are rep wheels. You're probably on a budget for your build, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I'm not going to make fun of you for it. I'm not gonna like say, oh, do do you do? Why did you spend four grand on a set of wheels? Exactly. Yeah. So like, when it comes to, like ESR, XXR is just price point and like whatever you want to do because you can get a set of ESRs for under a thousand dollars. It's like six, seven hundred bucks a set. Exactly. And then you go to like a company like Work and you spend like five thousand dollars on a pair of their wheels. Yeah, you're like, looking over a thousand. It's per ridiculous. Wheel. Yeah. So I mean. It's it's a it's a huge toss in the air when it comes to like rap versus like fake wheels. Um, definitely, and the same it's the same thing with like kits too. It's like you're gonna buy a fake rocket. But here's the thing about kits though: if you buy a fake rocket bunny kit, it might not fit. Right. It's not gonna fit right because they have to go off of a real kit, and sometimes it's just not the same. You still like, gotta modify a kit. Yeah, exactly. Even a rocket bunny, you still gotta make some changes to it. Yeah, and if it doesn't fit right, it just looks wonky and like. If you go back to when TJ first built his fake Rocket Bunny kit, 
on his car, he had a ton of problems. It was just, it was just super problematic. Didn't line so, up. yeah, it just didn't line up. It didn't work perfectly. So, that's the that's the thing. So it's you're it's like a gamble when it comes to like fake versus real rocket bunny kits and like pandem delivery walk, all that kind of stuff. <sighs> what was the next one? Get your phone. Okay, next one. Hold on. Uh, bags versus clothes. This is a big one. This is a huge one. <laughs> because it's like Noah Gurky versus Dustin. <laughs> it basically is. We should sit them down. Now. Yeah, well, I mean, we can do a completely a whole new podcast on bags and wheels. Because yeah, Noah just went off on Instagram about it. Yeah, Noah. I'll I'll read Noah's Noah's. I I I agree with it. I agree with it. It's I, once again. I think it's just all personal preference, to be honest. But. I mean, here's what Noah said. I think it's. I think it was pretty damn bold of him to say what he said. I think it was especially half a minute, over half a minute motions bagged. Yeah, like literally. I'm pretty sure 75 percent of us are bagged. Yeah, yeah, there's what? Casey. Casey's not. Well, Casey just got bags. He just got bags. <laughs> so so now literally, I'm pretty sure the only ones that's not like full blown bags are me, you. Noah and Austin. Austin, that's it. There's only four static guys. And then so for Noah, Noah, this is what Noah said in his Instagram. He goes, I get I don't I get so many people that ask me when I'm gonna get bags for my car or tell me that I need to get or that tell me that I need to bag my car and it annoys the hell out of me. Why is the car scene all about bags now? This is what I this is like so to defend everyone else that tells Noah to bag his car, but to defend Noah. I'm gonna defend the people that say to bag his car. Bagging your car is dope. It's 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 not just dope. It just it. I think it's practical where you can air up on rougher roads and go over speed bumps and stuff. Having to take them, at, you still gotta take them at an angle, but you're not taking them at an angle and it's not as scary as coils. Yeah, and I'm gonna touch on the subject of like why they, why bags are better for hi Gizmo. Gizmo can Gizmo can chill with us. Gizmo, come here. Hi Gizmo. So for bags, like bags make a car look better. Like no, not if you have some really sick fitment. I give a guy like mad props if you can rock some really but like, titty fitment on coils. That's true, that's true. But like cars look the best low. Like the low as possible. I don't care how you get there. Like if you just absolutely slam your car on coils and you are willing to drive that low awesome. all the time awesome. Austin and Noah like they're they're really freaking bold like to rub your tires and to like have the chance of like curbing your wheels like it's super super scary but like if you have like the, I mean that's the thing it's like bags are practical that's one thing you can air up air out whenever you want to it's like I I went if I had bags if like I had bags personally the just the satisfaction of airing out and people being like Like that's like that's one thing about bags. So, I mean, it's the personal satisfaction. Your car looks better on the freaking ground. Like Chris's car, Cam's car, like everyone's cars are literally just like sitting on the ground. Like it yeah. looks so badass. Like, would you rather see a picture of Chris's car slammed on the ground, or a picture of Chris's car with his white wheels on as monster truck status? Like I'm pretty sure everyone's gonna say you want to see Chris's car slammed to the ground. The so that's who, that's to defend bags. Yo, what are we on now? Defending coils. Defending coils. Uh, coils are cheaper. Badass. They're they're cheaper. More reliable. Definitely more. My reliable. friend, my friend has had his compressor go out at a meet, and we had to hook it up to another guy's compressor at the meet so he could go home because mm -hmm. it just failed on him. Gizmo, come here. But price point for coils? Yeah, it's it's so much lower. You can get you can get coils for you can get line. you can get re really decent coils for like half the price that you can get bags for. Yeah, just BCBRs. Yeah, exactly. and those are like they they always say they're on sale, but I'm pretty sure they're always on sale at like yeah you can yeah you can literally make anything on sale. It doesn't matter, but but don't run race lands. Yeah, race lands are just ask Isaac Brasser about race lands. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, whatever. And then there's lowering springs. If you're on a really big budget, just get lowering, lowering springs. You can lower your car an inch and a half to two inches on lowering spring. Yeah. And it, this ride quality, I don't think it'll change. No, if it's anything, so it'll get better. Low. It'll get better. Yeah. Except for 
Or you can just be stiff like this BMW. Yeah. So you can, stiff! Yeah, you can hug the corner. Yeah, you can hug the corner of this thing. Same with Subarus, they come with really nice suspension. They're a little boat, racky, whatever, but they're still a really decent suspension. Okay, next one! Wait, I was gonna say something. What, say something? If you're, if you're on bags, don't air up and be in the monster truck when you're cruising around. Be like Dustin and Andrew. Those guys ride at a pretty sick fitment with, especially Andrew. Andrew. Andrew literally has like this much at his ride height. And when he airs out, it's perfect. Yeah. But he doesn't ride around like a monster truck. Exactly. Like Chris. Okay, we have a really, 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 really good question here. What's Mitten Motion's goal slash mitten state mission statement? Oh boy. <laughs> um Okay, I would say our goal. I, I think Chris can back me up on this one and, and Booski too, is I think we're just trying to It's so hard because I know I know I know what we're trying to do, but like it's so hard to put it into words. And like people ask us like, oh what, what's mint motion all about? I'm like we're just trying to like bring a the car scene out. Oh, there's so many hidden cars. Yeah, I mean we're trying to bring it out. At first off, like there's so many like like what you said, there's so many hidden gems in in Grand Rapids, and especially in like Michigan too. I didn't even know my neighbor had a PS a Focus ST till about a month ago, and the thing sounds nasty as hell. Yeah, so I mean we're just trying to bring out the whole car scene in Grand Rapids, and most importantly bring like positivity and love out because naturally with like the sonic meets and like the whatever the the walmart or walgreens meets or i don't know what they're, what they're called now but um it's just there's so much hate man like we we threw our we threw our um i'm gonna address this because um it kind of uh kind of got to me a little bit um we threw our fifth third ballpark show and Everyone hated on us. It was like it was ridiculous. But everyone that went there loved it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just yes. Okay, I'll address this. Our price point had to be high because we rented out Fifth Third Ballpark. I mean, it's yeah. not cheap. It's not a cheap thing to do to rent out a ballpark for a day. I'm not gonna tell you guys the, like the exact number, but like it was super expensive. And I'm gonna tell you one thing right now is we barely, barely broke even. Like Chris and I. And the whole team, we barely made any money. We didn't. We, we literally probably didn't even make any money. So we're not we're not out there trying to like take all your guys' money and like get super fucking rich and like. But we can't throw these cars. shows out unless we have your support. Exactly. Like, if you guys want to have a good show, I mean, I'm not gonna put it like all the pressure on you guys because at the same time, it is our job to throw a good show for you guys. But we're not gonna have the same show without your guys support and love and like positivity and like, I'm a college student <laughs> I work just to like afford this car exactly like I I do I can't just dump a thousand dollars to throw me yeah exactly so I mean we had to go through an outside investor to uh, get the money to pay for this and it took all of our freaking time and and energy to just put this meat on and literally break even it was so worth it though because we got to see the whole community come together. It was It's a very new experience, especially for activities during shows like Car Limbo and uh, like the drag race and- uh, The drag race was cool, um, but the racing simulator- The racing simulator. We went to Clean shit. Culture Chicago, they didn't even have that. And I'm pretty sure that would have been huge there because that racing simulator- It was, it was badass. It was, yeah, it was nice. And it was easy to do, so like everyone could do it. But exactly, he's like the guy that runs it. Said it's the best show he's ever been to, too. So, I mean, I, I think we're doing something right when it comes to the shows. Did we get super off track? What was our oh, we're oh, oh we're, our goal and mission statement? So yeah, basically our mission statement is to bring all the love and all the po positivity and the car scene out in Grand Rapids, and then eventually just branch out, go to places like Chicago, uh, South Bend, Indiana, Detroit, up north, even. Um, that's gonna be like later, later, later we on. We gotta expand but. first, cause like trying to make a show out there. We, if all of us would drive up there and two guys would show, oh, I mean, yeah, it'd be nice to meet them, but otherwise it's like. It, otherwise, it's just pointless. It's a waste of our money and it's a waste of your guys' money to just go drive up there and, and do nothing. But we gotta I expand. Mean, yeah, we're growing. We're growing. We're what? We started this summer. We started. We literally started in April with like 300 followers, and then we're at 2,000 now at the end of the summer. Like. 
in Grand Rapids, it's super hard to like grow an Insta Instagram page that fast. And especially for a focused group, like we're, our, our, our Instagram is literally targeted to car people. And we grew from 300 car people to 2,000 car people. And not just that, it's just in Michigan. It's not like we're like clean culture, which- Which is like global. Every, everything, we're just Michigan, so. And we grew that fast. And we 100% just wanna thank you guys again for that. So we had to cut it um, because because the SD card blah 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 blah. So um, where next question: Where do we see ourselves in five years? Yes. Um, it's kind of difficult to to tell because we're just like just starting out and like to realistically to say an exact like figure, like you just have to like. Well, <clears throat> let me start my personal opinion where we're gonna be in five years. Um, I think. A realistic goal for us would be to have around 3,000 people at every show to throw around eight shows a season, which is a lot, and to be in states like Illinois, Indiana, uh, east side of Michigan, maybe even over to Ohio. Um, I mean, have a following there too, like have people know who we are and have them show up. Yeah, I would love, I would absolutely love to be at like 20K followers or like 30K followers or like 50K followers in five years. I think that's realistic. We did 2,000 followers in six months. I think five months. Five months, six, five, six months. We did 2,000. So I've, I'm pretty sure 50,000 is a realistic goal in five years. Especially if we start hitting people out of state. And exactly. I mean, it's going to be interesting. I We don't even know. And we're trying oh. to, like, yeah, we're not trying to be Michigan. Well, we'll still be Mint in Motion, but we're trying to get, like, our merchandise more like slab stickers and not just Mint in Motion. Maybe you get one, Save the Manuels. That's yeah, cool. Save the Manuels. Like, Save the Manuals because everyone's going automatic with their supercars now and all that kind of jazzy ju juha. So. Automatic life. Automatic life. Yeah. Ah, bitch! <laughs> it farts. It farts. It farts. It farts. And with um, Dustin's. Dustin's farts. Dustin's farts. I'm so glad Noah got a manual though. You know Noah's manual, right? Okay, good. <laughs> uh, uh, so five years, eight shows a year, three thousand people, three to four hundred cars registered, if not more, and basically grown into a bunch of different states. That's where we probably see it ourselves. And we hope to sell a shitload of merch, like a ton of it. Like, yeah, get more car things, like styling, kind of like just yeah, yeah. Modern our stuff, just make fun car things. You make it, make it not so, like focused, focused on just like motion. motion, like focus on like uh, individual bags make her dance, bags make her dance. Chris is saying, and like, um, they do. Where do we see our team in five years? I hope our builds are freaking crazy. Yeah, we, a lot of our guys have big plans. Chris has big plans for next year. I have ginormous plans for next year. Hopefully, I can make enough money to make this thing stupid fast, which is really easy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could, you know, you can like methanol inject this thing and push like seven hundred in the stock block. Dude, all I need is like a dine in stage two, and I'm over four hundred horsepower. Exactly. Yeah, and then are you gonna do the thing? What thing? can't afford a little you want. <laughs> <laughs> so man, maybe that's that's that'll be where he is in five years. Maybe liberty five walk. years I'll be a liberty walk. Yeah. If this still if this thing hasn't broke my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean we have some like crazy builds, crazy ideas. I mean, we literally I think we're off to a good good freaking start. Like I think we're I think we're chilling, to be honest. Like I think we're on our road up. I mean it's our draft should be like this from where we started. I mean, then, we're on like this right now. We we should. We're in five years. We want to be like up here, and then like still growing like all the way up there. Yeah. But for what low twenty year olds, twenty year olds, and eighteen, nineteen year olds, we're doing pretty well. We're doing pretty well. I mean, we yeah, literally a business. We yeah. try to walk through it with the team. I mean, our literally things that we can, okay. Oh, we should do this. Like things we need to change. Like things we need to like improve on in order to get to our goals. Our group chats. Suck. Our group chats. Uh, <laughs> respond in suck. our group chats. They don't just suck. Communication is like the, the main thing. Yeah. That's probably like the biggest thing. I want to end up in group chats like that. Our, we talk a lot, 
we're not focused on like card things all the yeah. time. I mean, it's just a bunch. Basically, mid, the team mid motion is just a bunch of good friends. Yeah, that's all it is. Time. I mean, I mean, like, okay, this is the thing too. Like, this is we're talking to like outside people about our inside inside team. I mean, it's just. We're not trying to exclude everyone. It's just these, these are our friends. Like these are our group of friends. Like Mitten Motion is a big ass group of stupid, funny, nineteen to freaking twenty five year olds that just like to fuck around and love cars and love to bring people together and enjoy people's builds and all that. That's basically what the team Mitten Motion. But they all about. care about Mitten Motion. Will like help to make it better exactly they all care about it and they're not out to make a bajillion dollars they're just down to have the community aspect of it and we encourage all of you guys to make your own teams your own squads i mean it's awesome to see like five six cars to ten cars rolling up to a meet at once and be like damn that's a badass crew and like i'm proud of how mint motion went out to a show in chicago and we came home with three awards like, we all rolled up, we had our booth, we had our 10 cars there, it was badass as hell. I mean, we came in and we took three awards home. We, we, Trent, freaking Dustin, Dustin, and Brian all took home awards, which is absolutely nuts. We actually yeah, went to an outside crew. show. Make a crew of friends, make, make a little group. Yeah, that's, I mean, we encourage all of you guys to make make your own, like, What is it, crew. Untitled? Untitled Automotive, like, hell yeah, dude. Like, Luke, Herzog, like, fuck yeah, dude. Like, grab some cars and, like, just grow that. I mean... We encourage everyone to do their own thing too. Yeah, that's I mean, what Vaded Vaded is a group. Yeah, Vaded's a group. Like, there's like Violent. They're like huge Envious, groups all around the country. Yeah. Envious, all that kind of stuff. Like, there's a ton of different things for you guys to do out there. But yeah, we kind of got a little off topic. Let's go to our right, next topic. Right. right. Yeah, next topic. <sighs> Let's go. Okay. Let me see if uh, more, more people have responded. Okay. Ooh, someone said, I'm so hyped for the fall merch drop. Fall merch drop's gonna be lit. It's gonna be dope. Okay, so how did we, how did it all first start out? The first pics and videos would be awesome to see. So we'll insert some of our first pictures. Like, if you guys want to, um, go deep into the Instagram. And we have a highlight. It's uh, our first meet. It's it's our first meet. It's like, look at this. It, I go, can we get this pack? Like it was 27 weeks ago was our first meet. 27 weeks ago. And we started out, look at look at that. <laughs> that was our first meet. Like Just 10 a, cars. Like 10 cars. We had the Holland boys come out. It was actually sick. And it was on a Wednesday night in the middle of who knows what month it was, but No, I saw them in motion. I thought they were a joke and now I'm a part of it. To be yeah, honest. exactly. So I was like, who are these kids? Yeah, I mean, I didn't know Booski until Mitten Motion, so, I mean, and I were, like, one of, like, best friends, so, like, I mean, we're all best friends in the part of it, like, we, we all just, like, meet each other, and, like, to be a part of the crew, you just come up to us and just fucking have a good time, be chill, and I mean, like, if we see, in, like, potential in you and how you could help us out, exactly. we'll, we'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll reach out to you guys and all that kind of stuff, so. <sighs> what else? What were our topics? Uh, oh, how did we all first start out? Um, we'll dabble into like what happened with our previous. Chris and Weaver were having a sleepover. They like slept in the same bed, had a weird dream together, and they woke up and they're like, "Let's start with motion." <laughs> That's not how it happened, but kind of. Uh, so it was three of us in my apartment. Uh, it was me, Chris, and then our other guy. We don't want to. We're not gonna start anything, but um, well, we, we just probably won't say his name. But uh, it was three three people in our apartment, and we were just we were just thinking. Like, I was like, you know what? I was I was just scrolling through Instagram, and I was like in Facebook, and I was just dabbling into Facebook for the first time. And I was like, damn, like, wow. There's so much fucking hate, man. There's so much like bullshit. Lost me. Like, there's, it's just disappointing. To, it was disappointing for me to see that so many people could just, like, hate on the Michigan car scene. And, like, I've lived in Michigan, like, my whole life. And, like, I've seen, like, no car scene. And I've seen it a little bit, but definitely I haven't seen it where we're doing a meet every weekend. Yeah. And there's, like, nothing, there's friendly. nothing consistent. There's nothing, like, different out there. There's Cars and Coffee, which is, like, four or five times a summer or something like that, a season. 
But I see a lot of hate at those. And it's just, it's just like, eh. and it's like stock cars. No, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Coffee I love coffee is dope because you don't see that many exotics in one spot. Exactly. So that's why that's why we love cars and coffee. But at the same time, we just want to branch out into like every thing or every kind of car. I and see like, more personal cars and people's taste in cars coming to Mint Motion Meets than someone just pulling up in a stock Jeep. Pulling up, parking their car, locking the door, and then walking in to go get some food, and you're done. Like our meets, we want to, like our, our weekly meets. We don't want, we don't we don't expect everyone to come out to our weekly meets because it's just for people to like catch up, say what's up, like yeah, grab some merch, come talk to us. Like that's what our weekly meets are for. Just a chill. Just, just, hang just, out. just, just chill. Hang Who out. Who doesn't like to hang out with like a bunch of lower Our dudes. Yeah, yeah like, just to have conversations, like meet people, make connections, all that kind of shit. Yeah, it's like go there and just talk to someone new every time. Yeah. That's 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 our goal for you guys. It's just like yo, like come to one of our meets, talk to someone new every every meet. Come yeah, someone people. please next meet, come ask me about my BMW. My come BMW. ask me about my 240 because it's not done yet. It won't be done. Hey Boski, do you want to hear a 240 joke? I'm supposed to say yes. Yes. I'm still working on it. <laughs> what else? It's give me a sec. I'm still working on it. You know something about BMWs. Buy more. Weed. No. Broken most weekends. Broken most weekends. Hmm? You're, you're not broken. It's okay. Weird awkward silence. Um, uh, we're still on how we first started out. Okay, so basically, we were like, okay, this is stupid, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, we hate this because the car scene is fucked up. And, like, I was in California last summer and, um, uh, the car scene out there is banging, it's popping, they throw meets like every weekend, it's like dope. So I was like, yo, let's do something like that here, bro. So we decided to start up this like weekly thing where we go out and pick a spot and then like put it on Instagram and then people show up and you hang out and it's a good ass time. And so we did that and then we were like, dude, let's throw a show. I was like, dude, yes, let's do it. I was like, let's do it at Fifth Third Ballpark, bro. We were like, just like, we were just like, we were just like joking around. We were like, dude, let's throw a show inside Fifth Third Ballpark. That'd be like sick as hell. And then Chris was like, dude, like, let's do it. I was like, okay, you down? I was like, fuck yeah, let's do it. So we were like, shit, well, let's do some research. So we did some research, found out how much it was. Wasn't cheap. I had to go to an investor, basically. And then everything just escalated from there. I mean, it's it was then the date change. It really, really screwed us up. Really like, screwed us up. We're glad that everyone that came up still made it. Yeah, like for real. I mean, Rob Dom couldn't come unfortunately because of the date change, and Subulicious couldn't come unfortunately due to the date change. He's a busy man. I mean, they're they're both busy guys. Like they're they're influencers and they're big guys, whatever. But um, yeah, that's basically how it started. We were in my apartment talking about some whack shit, and then just. It went to boo, no like boo, because it's like boo right now. It needs to be boo in like five years. Um, see what we got here. Uh, Buick boy, ha! Buick boy, we're gonna talk about Buick boy. He's at every meet and he supports us. One of our biggest supporters. Thank you. Who's Buick boy? Buick boy, you know Buick boy. No, no, you don't. You weren't at the like the first meet. I'll, I'll introduce you to Buick Boy. He's dope. Um, I'll like we'll we'll add some of our first pics and like first videos of like our first meet. It was it was funny. Uh, Kyle Lockwood says, "Where's the legacy at? Broken." Yeah. Oh yeah, Kyle's legacy. Knock knock. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear a super joke. Knock knock. 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 Uh, no, Kyle, that legacy is pretty badass. What do you? I mean, I mean, he's gonna do some dope shit to it. I mean, I hope somehow that kid finds money to do dope shit. I don't know, whatever. But, but he, if he says he'll go, he's gonna do it, he'll he'll do it. So one of our next questions is: you guys should talk about your favorite meat spots and memories from there. What's your favorite meat spot? Oh, this is no. A good I think one. the first. That's a good it wasn't. One. It was the second time we went to Holland. That was my first Holland meat. And we did it in the park, and it was like a good turnout too. Like we filled that spot. Like oh, that uh, Winstrom Park. 
Yeah, the first time we went there, we filled that park and then we all cruised out to the Not state so park. To, yeah. Out to the state park with everyone and then what cruised to Buffalo Wild Wings for the team and that was mm. Oh yeah. That was probably one of my favorite meets for sure. It was just like what well, took two huge tables up and just got to sit with the whole team and have wings. some dinner. It was like that was so fun. I mean, that's like the whole point of meets is just to bring everyone together. Like that's the whole point of like the car show or you car don't even shows. care if you don't have a car like like literally just show up and like hang out like i don't care if you have a fucking like rusted out honda freaking i don't care i don't care come to our meets we just want to like bring the community together yeah, i mean on, by all means if you have a ford gt in your garage bring it out it'd be badass let you show your car please whatever do. please do um what was your favorite that was definitely on the like definitely one of my favorite ones. Um Rick, man. Favorite meme? Grand Grand Haven was lit. Which one though? The first one? The one Kevin actually came to? Yeah, that one was fun. The one he, in Grand Haven on the, the shoot by the pier and then um a lot of us went down to actually Grand Haven to the state park for the sunset. Yeah, for sure. That was one of my favorite ones. If I had to pick her favorite one, though, ugh. if I had to pick my absolute favorite one that we've ever had, definitely it would have to be the Holland State Park one. I didn't make that one. Yeah, it was like really early in the year, and we freaking packed that place, man. Dude, Holland's got some sick cars. They need to start showing up more, especially when we're in Holland. Yeah, Holland car scene, man, it's huge. I mean, if you guys are watching this, like, come out to all of our meets, dude. Like... You guys have a ginormous car scene. And we'll be out in Holland a lot more. And Yeah, it makes it easier for our Holland boys to come because yeah. they work hard. They don't like to drive. Exactly. So, yeah, Holland Step Park one. We packed it with the 1,000 horsepower Super there with the turbo that was bigger than my head. Yeah, that was definitely one of my favorite ones. My parents came to that one. My grandparents came to that one. That was a good one. Um... LS Swap or 2J Swap the world? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm a good 2J. I mean, I'm just a, I'm a Japanese muscle guy. I like the turbo noises. I like I like inline sixes. I like inline fours. Yeah, I don't know. N54 Swap the world. Yeah, N54 Swap the world, man. Basically, the modern 2J. The modern 2J ball. N54s for life. Uh, broken BMWs for life. Yay. Okay, we're gonna do we're gonna do LS swap or two J swap the world, and then we're gonna go to best first car, and then we're gonna be done. Um, so I'd say, I mean, my personal opinion, two J, one hundred percent. Would you go LS or two J? Dude, I think it's just badass to throw. Them. If your car has like a four banger in it, yeah, and you throw an LS in it, okay, okay, that's pretty badass. But like at the same time, okay, okay, let's say, but I'm, okay, there's well, some here, good here. motors, okay. Some cars belong with the motor they came in and just make that motor sick. That's true. But, but okay, let's say let's say you have a perfect condition, like body wise, 240. Doesn't matter, like S15, S14, S13, doesn't matter. With sick ass drift stance. So for a drift car, no engine in it, what would you slap in there? Any motor, what would you slap it in? Oh shit. Any motor for a, a clean, like perfect drift setup, but no motor, and a 240. What would you slap in there? An LS. You would slap an LS? Yeah. Just, LS what though? I don't know the LS. This I don't know the LS. Is Nate whatever you say? Like <laughs> <laughs> whatever you say. I'm gonna get a text from you making fun of me, but yeah. I think an LS would be sick in it. It would just fill up the whole engine bay and Make it look pretty. LSs yeah. sound really good. Yeah, my personal opinion, I'd slap if I was gonna put any motor into a drift car. Like if I had my 240, I do have my 240. But if I was gonna put any motor I wanted into it, it'd be a 1J or an RB26. I'm sorry. I'm sorry too. Yeah, <laughs> Big Stone doesn't like that. It's yeah. saying LS. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big like V8 guy like yeah I like big gold V8s but I'm like I don't like the I'm not a huge fan of like the sound of V8s especially for drift cars I like the whoosh 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 
of two J's and one J's and SR's and K. <laughs> not really K's. I'm not a big K fan. Um, definitely like two J's. Yeah. Turbo. Two J's, one J's, SR's, RB's, all those. Like, definitely adding turbos gives your engine more life out of the back. It makes it sound way cooler. Yeah, it's just like. Whoosh, 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 Yep, that's a This thing burbles like no other. Mm -hmm. With a stock. E <laughs> <laughs> With a stock exhaust. Like. Yeah. I mean, once again, it's personal preference. Um, but if there's a screaming V8 passing you, like what? Z06 Corvettes? Okay, yeah, okay, the Z06. They literally the are Z01. like cruising by you. And, it just and, okay, okay, okay. The only V8, not the only, but like. My favorite V8 ever is the one in the GT350, the Mustang GT350. Oh, the that is so badass, man. It sounds, yeah. And some Mercedes V8s sound really I don't, good. Okay, Mercedes V8s, I don't like the sound of German V8s. Really? No, I don't think they sound good at all. Huh. Especially a lot of them put turbos on it, and it really knocks down the noise, but I don't. It's true. I mean, they crackle a lot. But, I like I I like I Mercedes V8s and I love freaking the GT350 V8. That's about it. American V8s are definitely the most like lively, and I'm gonna cut your face off. Yeah, kind of V8. for sure. Okay, best first car. Not a BMW. Not a BMW. Probably not. No. Oh well, actually. Okay. Okay, if you get an older BMW. Okay, let's start with let's start with let's start with. Let's just say best first car under ten thousand dollars. I didn't have ten thousand dollars. No, let's just, let's just say best first car under under ten thousand. I would go like six or seven. I would get really yeah. six or seven. I'd get a Jetta with a two turbo, That's easy a to one. Perfect. Older A four. You can maybe even pick up an what two thousand. You can dude. You can pick up like a two thousand. You can pick up a two thousand S four. Yeah, you can pick up an S old S four for cheap. And those are the twin turbo V sixes, and those sound freaking good, man. They sound good, but. They're not the most reliable no, cars no. in the, the world. 2.7. Yeah, those things are whatever. But I mean, I I love S4s. Like if I they could build, if I could build any S4, I would they make crazy good. power super easily. Yeah, and super stock too. Like the stock ones are like you throw an exhaust stock. on an intake and you're oh, set. Sounds so good. Same with like what older A4, you can do that too. With two anything like if you're gonna go Volkswagen Group, get a 2.0 turbo with GTI. Yeah, GTIs. GTI is a really good first car. Um, Especially learn a manual. German cars are the easiest cars to, I believe to learn a manual. Yeah. They're so any forgiving. any like A four. I mean, if you, if you want it, you go like A six or something. But you won't get it. No, they don't come with the two point oh. Yeah. You get the three point two, which ass. Yeah. Or um, you can get the four. What, I think it's a four point oh or four point two. Their V eight. Like he knows the German stuff. I don't. That's I'm a big bad. old J Japanese guy. Um, when it comes to like, if you're living in Michigan, your first car, definitely go with. Uh, Subaru. If you can uh, afford like, a WRX. If you can afford a WRX, like maybe like an 02, 03, or even an 04, 05, or even an 06, 07, if you can find one of those for under 10 grand, get a WRX. Like, check for rust, though. Check for rust. Like, they always rust in like that back, the rear quarter panels. Quarter panels. Um, um, right make, over the top of the wheel. If it's at 100,000 miles, make sure they checked up on their head gaskets. Um, just make sure, like, if you're going to buy a WRX, do your research on the WRX and, and, like, ask the guy, ask the owner about it and make sure. about it. If there's anything wrong that he's not up on it, you're going to pay for it in the end. Yeah, you will. So, I when it comes to buying a WRX, just be cautious. Um, there are turbo cars and knock, knock, who's there? Um, I'd say yeah, Subarus aren't bad. You can find Outback XTs for six or seven grand. Yeah, Outbacks are nice. Like older, older Foresters. I love older Foresters. I want to get one for my winter daily. Like an older and Outback. And you can find an XT in that too. That, yeah, those are exactly. Forester XTs are super badass. If you slam those, oh my god, they look so good. Or or even um, like one of the newer Cross Treks. Eh, how much does Isaac pick his car up for? I don't know. They're not expensive. If you're if you want a newer car for your first car, I'd go with the Crosstrek. I mean, they look good low. I mean, Isaac Brasser, I know I give you shit for this every single time you park your car in here and working on it because you broke something, but. Uh, they're, they look cool. They look pretty Not badass. many people have a bag Crosstrek. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's pretty damn unique, and I think it's pretty dope. Especially, Especially on Corvette wheels. Corvette wheels, must say. Yeah. <laughs> C4 Corvette wheels on Yeah, that's badass. But um, first cars, Miata. 
Miatas are dope. Yeah, like, if you want to go wheel wheel drive in the summer, they're cheap. They're super cheap. They're super reliable. And if you find a good one, keep it. They're gems. Like you can resell those for so much. Um, definitely or NA or NB Miatas for sure. Definitely for first cars. Uh, older Subarus. Um, yeah, you uh, can pick up a 2.5 RS for like four or five grand. That's true. And uh, those are, you get style points for those. Yeah, exactly. 2.5 RSs are dope. Um, definitely like uh, older GTIs, uh, even like freaking, like even R32. Uh, those are dope. The Volkswagens. If you want oh, one, yeah, if you can. More. Yeah, if you're going for the max around 10, you can pick up a 2003 R32 with pretty decent miles on it. Yeah. And what else? Um, Basically, German cars for like 10 grand. Yeah. And then. I mean, if you can find an older BMW, they're mostly going to be. Real we forgot. We forgot Hondas, dude. So if you guys, I mean, honestly, I don't care for Hondas. I don't. I'm not a huge Honda guy, um, unless it's an S2K. I'm in love with S2Ks, but Hondas are super reliable and cheap cars. Like if you're gonna buy like your same first with car, Toyota. yeah, same with Toyota. If you're gonna buy like one of your first cars, like get like an older Camry, or if you're not like super in into like the car world, just get something like a Honda. Hondas are super reliable. Same with older Toyotas. Toyotas are super reliable. Yeah, Toyota, um, you can run over 200,000 miles with no issues. Exactly, yeah. I mean, my Chevy, too, is running for, like, my daily is running for 270-something thousand miles. It's chilling. Yeah. It's flex fuel, got E85. And if you can find a Mazda Speed 3. Yeah, Mazda Speed 3s are Mazda 3s. Those are super nice cars, too. Well, I mean, yeah, they're not bad. I yeah. think they just, when they're coming down the road, it just looks like a car with a big smile on its face. 350Zs, too. 350Zs, dirt cheap, and the HR motor is super reliable. Like, oh my god, yeah. Dude, the VQs are so reliable. Uh, yeah, you can rev like. You can ooh, ooh, and it. G35s. That's a super good car for like the first car. Basically, 350Z, but with a better interior. Yeah, exactly. That's and what it is. And, and you can get them in all-wheel drive, too. Yeah, but then you lose out on the manual. That's true. Um, You can get a uh, G37X. For pretty cheap too yeah you're looking around 12 grand for one of those right now with all miles yeah um what else we got and they make good power vq vq is they make like 300 horsepower it's like not bad at all for a stock car that's, no, that's super good yeah for an na car mm -hmm. anything else for first cars on oh, no, odyssey <laughs> that was my first car <laughs> that's the first car that i drove uh for like a couple months until i crashed it no, I didn't crash it. Did I crash it? What happened to my Honda? Well, you can pick up Dodge Caliber uh, RT. <laughs> no, it's true. Are... It's, it's true. You can. You can pick up a Dodge Caliber. Those things, Dude, and they, they actually have like a decent sound system. I don't know how much an SRT4 goes for. Yeah, but those are nice too. Um, anything else? No, I think that's about it for our first car. Yeah, I think that's about it for our first podcast too. That's a lot of too. choices. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap it up. Please let us know if you guys have any more topics or anything we should talk about. Yeah, drop some comments on how we did and what we should do. Yeah, if you got, like, the quality's bad or you didn't like the background noise or whatever, just let us know how we did. How, let us know how you liked the first podcast, the topics. Are we boring? Are we not? Um, just let us know. Um, if you want us to, like, cut swearing, we can do that, too. We can probably bleep everything out. Um yeah, just drop a comment. We're, I mean, we're, yeah, we, we want to be like raw and unset, or we raw and uncut because we like to show you guys like our, our actual personalities and not like hide from you guys. But at the same time, we want to keep it like family friendly. Um, but yeah, just let us know how we did, and um, we're gonna sign off from the first podcast, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out. Come back for the next one. Peace.